Hey YouTube, Mr. Terry back here once again for another History Teacher Reacts video. Today we're going to be watching Extra Credits uh, video, Catherine the Great, Not Quite Empress Yet, Part 2. Um, I did a video on Part 1, so make sure you check that out first if you have not seen it yet. And we'll get started here in just a second. Um, just a couple things. Um, there will be a link to the original video down below. I always do that with reaction videos so that you can give the original content creators a like and subscribe because um, they do the work here on this and need to uh, get credit for that work. Um, if you have suggestions for future videos, you can leave those either in the comments or one of the best places to do that. And also just if you're a history fan in general, to join our Discord channel. Um, it's got a lively community and uh, we basically are talking history all day. So a link to join that is also down in the description. So if you're a history fan, I invo uh, invite you to join that um, as well. All right, well, let's just go ahead and get started. Two carriages strain against the muck and mud of the Eastern European plains. Inside, a girl and her mother sit, traveling incognito. Un All right, so if you remember back to the other video, um, things are kind of being set up for Catherine, who um, is is from Germany here. Um, and by the way, they're not calling her that yet at this moment, but um, she's kind of getting hooked up here uh, and trying to get a royal marriage, and looks like she is going to be headed to Russia under assumed names each day takes them closer to russia each day takes them closer to destiny y'all oh, they're really getting uh, dramatic about this aren't they for the first time in her life sophia was celebrated as someone special upon her arrival in russia yeah, the local well. fort fired its guns She's in her honor court. people whispered of her presence as her sleighs chased the court from the winter palace to moscow when they caught up with Elizabeth's court, they were greeted by ministers, and then, to Sophia's delight, Peter himself. His fish-like appearance, nervous disposition, and his tendency... What does fish-like mean? Appearance? Am I missing something? Comment below if you know what that means. See to Babel had not abated at all since they met when she was ten, but he was enthusiastic to see her, and her heart soared at the prospect of such a regal match. Then they were led in to see the Empress. Sophia was overwhelmed by the dazzling splendor. Never in her life had she seen such majesty. And so the ins- Now all this sounds like it's something out of a Disney movie right now. There's no- I mean, is there any way this stuff is as- I don't know if dramatic's the right word, but it's like she's got this, like, um, Cinderella, like, rags to riches story, and she's just impressed, and everything is going this way, and all that stuff, so... I don't know, I don't know if reality is ever quite like that. But nevertheless, I mean, these are big prospects for her, for sure. Coming over to um, potentially join this royal family of, of Russia, it's a big deal. Suing days passed with her at Peter's side. And with each passing day, she learned a little bit more about how boorish and unconcerned with his position Peter was. He told her about how much he loathed Russia. He <laughs> barely even spoke the language. See, this is the reality check German in all things. He hated the culture and the religion, <laughs> planned to remain a Lutheran. He even told her that he did not love her, and rather was in love with someone else, but was resigned to marry her because- There's the reality of these arranged royal marriages right here, right? Everything's all set up and all this stuff, but it's like, it's never the real story. You have, for these monarchs, you have like, them on the, like, the surface, it's what you see, and then it's a completely different story. They're completely different people behind those closed doors. And they all know it, too. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll see if this really throws off Catherine. Um, if there's some naivety here, we'll see. But this sounds like the real story. Everything we've talked about this far was the Cinderella story. Now let's get let's get real here. Because his aunt wished it. Meanwhile, was in love with someone else, but was resigned to marry her because his aunt wished it. Meanwhile, Sophia began to realize that it wasn't Peter she had to please, but rather the Empress, Elizabeth. True. She took rapidly to her study of Russian and the Russian Orthodox faith. This pleased Elizabeth, She's but got bigger Sophia plans took here. to her studies almost too much, staying up late at night in the harsh Russian cold to continue her practice. Soon she fell ill. Elizabeth herself rushed to nurse her, but it was pneumonia. Not many survived that disease in those days, and her recovery was made all the more difficult by the doctor's insistence on bloodletting. For weeks, she lay at death's door. Bloodletting. But as the sickness... They're still doing that? Like, didn't they realize that bloodletting failed, like, back in the plague? I mean... 
Where's the advancements, right? <laughs> burned through her, rumor of how she contracted the disease spread. Her love of Russia, for that's how everybody perceived her rumor. ardent studies, was made known, and she became beloved, even as she slipped in and out of consciousness. When the people... Then came a moment where everyone thought it was the end. Her mother requested a Lutheran priest, but Sophia, with what little strength was in her, asked for an Orthodox priest instead. So I piss and off the, the people. Of this... um, Lutheranism was not the dominant religion of Russia. They were um, Orthodox Christian, have been for um, for a long time. So it's probably a smart move for for her to use the religion of the people. And it sounds like she's winning over um, the public with how devoted she actually is to Russia at this time. Um, she definitely seems more than that than her potential husband. Washed throughout the land. But even as Sophia's esteem was rising, her mother's came crashing down. Shortly after Sophia recovered, a series of letters that Johanna, Sophia's mother, had sent were intercepted. The king of Prussia had asked her to help him displace the Russian diplomat Bestashev at Elizabeth's court, and at this she failed spectacularly. Vastly underestimating her opponent, she got caught sloppily speaking ill of him, the queen, and Russia. Elizabeth's ire was intense, and Sophia sat within the blast radius. Ooh, A courier okay. burst in on Sophia and Peter while they were playing, and told Sophia that she was to pack, that she was to be sent away immediately. Luckily, before her exile, she managed to get a moment with Elizabeth and humble herself before her. Elizabeth's fury abated, and she decided that the child could still marry her nephew. She even allowed Sophia's mother to stay, although her standing at court was greatly diminished. Elizabeth even accelerated things. Put Remember, it looks like she has, the mother is very much like a helicopter mother, almost like living through her daughter in a lot of ways and is definitely using a lot of this i think to raise her standing and i you know that's common with all of these arranged marriages and stuff like that is the parents using their kids to lift themselves up although her standing at court was greatly diminished elizabeth even accelerated things pushing forward sophia's formal conversion to russian orthodoxy so that the official betrothal could take place but at the dinner after the betrothal, Johanna exploded in an outburst when she was not seated at the table reserved for royalty, saying that she would not be seated with mere ladies of the court. Elizabeth obliged her and sat her in a totally separate room by herself. <laughs> with Sophia's conversion to orthodoxy nice. came a new name. She was rechristened Ekaterina, or as we know her in English, okay. Catherine. So we can start after calling this, her Catherine Catherine now. spent her days in the royal life, dancing, attending court, going to balls, simply counting down the days until the wedding. But then tragedy struck. Peter oh. was laid low with smallpox. Oh, no. Catherine waited nervously for news. Eventually, Peter recovered, but he was disfigured. His already betrachean features now marred by the scars of the disease. The first time Catherine looked upon him, she was horrified. But She's the illness gross, also stirred a resolve in the Empress Elizabeth. The realm needed an heir. There was no time to wait, no time to risk some other horrible malady. And so, Catherine and Peter were married. The affair was grand, okay. full of splendor. Catherine's dress was of the finest make, and she was decked out with jewels. All of the highest and most notable members of the court were there. There was dancing and revelry, and then, at last, the ladies of the court escorted her to her bedchamber. There, not knowing what to do, she waited, alone. And she waited. And waited. Two hours later, Peter showed up, reeking of alcohol, and crashed onto the bed, passing out in an instant. At had last, his own her marriage there. had freed her from her mother, but now Catherine had a new humiliation and torment. Her husband showed no affection for her, and spent all of his days playing buffoonish children's games, making his servants dress up like soldiers and march around his room. Even when Peter what? was eventually made to give up such things and sleep in the same room as his wife, rather than be with her, he would wait until dark when their governess was gone, and then take out his toy soldiers and have one of the maids move them across the bed as he ordered them about. What? Um... What are the ages right here? This guy, I mean, Peter sounds really, really immature. What What are the ages here? Is, is you know, um, she definitely seems more mature than him, but if he's really out, like, playing with dolls and all this stuff, I, I get it's common, like, okay, he's not interested in her. This is not a marriage she really was into, but it seems a little bit different with him, um, with his maturity level here. It doesn't seem like a, a future... You know, like a, like a king here, you know what I mean? And she's, it looks like going through all the protocol that um, 
somebody would as as a um, potential monarch as well. She learned. She, I mean, she she left her own culture, went to Russia, dove right into learning the language and the culture. She converted to their religion. Um, she's thinking ahead. You know what I mean? Like pushing the wedding up, and uh, she's definitely got these bigger plans. But that's not happening with Peter here. If anyone knows a little bit more, I haven't looked up exactly what these ages are. If there's a big difference between the two, I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments, though. This continued for seven years. Then Catherine met a rakish young nobleman, far more knowledgeable in the ways of love than she. Mm. At first, she resisted his advances, far more compatible. but eventually she gave in. Soon after, she was pregnant. She suffered through two Ooh. horrible miscarriages, and then, finally, a son was born. Whispers abounded as to the son's actual parentage, and though in both looks and temperament he seemed Peter's son, and not any of the young lovers Catherine had taken, the matter would never be settled conclusively. But that didn't really matter, for as far as anyone official was concerned, Russia now had an heir. Okay. And so life moved apace. Wait, wait, so I don't know, do, do we know or not if this... Is Peter's, I mean, is it for sure this other person's child, or is it possibly Peter's? Do we know for sure yet what the lineage is? I guess regardless, um, it's not going to end up mattering, but yeah, anyone know that? Peter and Catherine living separate lives with separate loves with their little court outside the halls of power. Then Elizabeth died. All of a sudden, Peter was made emperor, and okay. life changed. In 1762, he took the throne, and one of his first orders was to reverse his aunt's military policies. For years, Russia had struggled in the Seven Years' War, that same war that kicked off the American Revolution and, through doing so, eventually led to Bolivar. Russia had exhausted innumerable men and material trying to break the might of Prussian arms. After so many years of fighting, they were on the verge of success. Prussia was nearing utter collapse. Berlin itself was on the verge of falling. But then, Peter offered Prussia peace, giving back everything that had been won by Russian sacrifice and strength of arms. It was the second miracle of the House of Brandenburg. It okay. saved Prussia and Frederick the Great, but it sat ill with the Russian people. It sat even worse with the Russian military and nobility. Catherine was horrified. Peter was more concerned with his title as Duke of Holstein than being Tsar of Russia. He had just given up Why? on the most important war in the world in order to turn all of Russia's might against Denmark so that oh. he might restore some small claim the of the House of Holstein that they'd lost years before. And though some of his domestic policies were progressive and hailed as necessary reforms, for the most part, Catherine watched him blunder from one alienating act to another. Even during the funeral of his own aunt, while Catherine showed herself to be the model of orthodox humility and respect, Peter didn't even make an effort to appear to care about orthodox customs and made a mockery of Elizabeth's funeral. <laughs> you wonder if it's getting out here that for the Russian people that this is, this is probably not the guy you want running the country. You know what I mean? Now we know uh, if you know about Catherine, she's going to be a very very powerful leader um, eventually, and uh, I, I'm glad to be able to watch these and see how this is is like starting to unfold. But it's you can totally tell that she's going to be the one that's going to be embraced and be the one that's going to be the one taking charge here. I mean, you see it in the early years of the, uh, of the marriage here. He would go even further with his contempt for the church, trying to secularize all church property and even mm. demanding that clergy shave their beards. But it really was Blasphemous. the campaign in Denmark that doomed him. Such an act, so completely disconnected from the interests of Russia, showing such complete disregard for the honor of the army, or even the well-being of its men, was one step too far. And more foolishly still, yeah, against the direct counsel of Frederick the Great, the very man who he so admired, and whose peer he now considered himself to be, Peter let this little war pull him away from Moscow, mm, to remove him that from the war. center of power and the court. Soon, a plot began to form to replace Peter. And at the center of that plot was his replacement, his wife. Of course. Join us next time for a coup, a coronation, okay. and a queen, as Russia moves from its bumbling Tsar to its resplendent new Tsarina. Great. Um, this this video was, was great and, and starting to bridge it a little bit. And you could see uh, now where that rise to power is coming, coming from. <laughs> a coup against your own husband to take over his own country. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. All right. Well, cool. I'm, I'm 
looking forward to watching more of this. Um, I believe this was six parts. This is part two. So stay tuned. Keep an eye out for um, for future videos um, from from this series, and we'll uh, try to get through it here. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later. All right. Well, great. Yeah, I enjoyed this. Um, again, looking forward to more. Um, uh, just a couple more invitations to, to say once again. Uh, if you'd like to talk about this video with our little history community, make sure to join our Discord channel. Link will be down below. Um, if you have suggestions uh, for future videos, you can always leave those, um, whether it's on YouTube here in the comments or on the uh, on the Discord as well. So. Um, if you like this um, kind of stuff too and you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that. Also, if you're interested in watching these live, um, I've been doing live premieres on these videos. And it's been fun to, to have people there and we talk about the video as it's going. But if you want to make sure you can get to those, um, I believe you need to click the little bell by the notifications. And that will, I think, let you know when when stuff starts airing, uh, if I remember right. So anyway, I encourage you to do that if you would like to continue on there. I thank you once again for joining us, and uh, we'll see you very soon. Bye.